one question that I've always been interested in is, you know, how do these babies keep these languages apart? So no one tells them, oh, you're going to be learning one language. You're going to be learning two languages. You're going to be learning three languages. They just hear language in their environments. And, and, you know, sometimes it's different people speaking different languages and sometimes it's not, you know, it could be any kind of situation for them. Um, and so how do they figure out how many languages there are and how do they kind of keep them apart? So we can talk more about this, but some people, you know, are concerned that babies are going to be confused and they're not going to figure it out. But in fact, we, we never really meet adults who are confused about their language, right? We don't, we don't go around seeing people like, oh, I have no idea when, you know, if I'm speaking Spanish or I'm speaking English or I'm speaking Mandarin. Um, and I think it's the same for babies, you know, they have ways to um, tell their languages apart, to separate, separate them and mm -hmm. start to build these different language systems. And, and I would call them separable language systems. So in the sense that they, they can learn to use them separately. They don't always, you know, we do hear kids mixing their languages and pulling from different languages, but ultimately we know that adults can use one language if they choose, can use another, you know, if they if they are in a moment to do so. And, and I think the same is, is true of babies. We're trying to figure out, you know, how exactly they do that. So what they're paying attention to, what is this process like? So that's that's really one question that drives a lot of our research. Fantastic. And you already mentioned it, many people do still unfortunately believe that uh, babies can get confused if they hear more than one language and and can you shed a little bit of light I, I know you're still researching it but can you shed some light on on what do you think the main factors are for babies to keep the, their languages separate or how yeah. they are separable for them mm -hmm. so we actually don't find evident any evidence that babies are confused when they're exposed to multiple languages um, and what we think that they're they're doing is actually paying attention to those differences that that are inherent to different languages. So, you know, each language sounds different from another language, just the sounds of a language. So we could think about the particular, you know, sound. So English has B's and P's, but also a, a H sound and French has an U sound that doesn't, you know, isn't in English. And so we have these sounds that are different in different languages. We also have rhythms that are different in different languages. So languages like English and German have one kind of rhythm, languages like French and Spanish have another kind of rhythm. And actually we've done research with newborn babies showing that they're paying attention to this rhythm. So even from the first few days after birth, they can tell, okay, these two languages are different from each other. Um, I can hear the rhythmic differences. And that's whether they're you know, be, gonna be exposed to one or two languages. So I think they're they're paying attention to, to those sounds of the language. Um, and, and these are giving them clues that there are different systems that they're going to acquire, or even things like which words tend to go together. So, you know, English, you know, if I'm speaking English, there'll be one English word after another. And then at some point, maybe I'll switch to French. And then there's one French word after another. So there might be some switching. But actually, if you're keeping track of these words and words that tend to to bunch up, you know, all the English words will tend to be together in time closer than all the French words. So this is another way that they might be figuring out, oh, there's sort of two things here, and this is how I can figure out which things belong in each of my languages. And uh, that's just fascinating. How how do you know that from the babies that you're researching? It's not like you can ask them. So how, yeah. how, how, how I just, I would like to kind of put this myth for once and for all a way and the kind of the, the the way you have found that out so can you please tell us a little bit more about not too technical details but some some specific I, absolutely i mean you know as parents and and i have a daughter myself who's who is bilingual and she's six and you know we we look at these babies and how do we know what they're thinking how can researchers even figure that out and so uh, over the years infant researchers have designed really neat techniques to figure out what babies are thinking and what they can do so for example um, i did a study with newborn babies so this is what i'm talking about when i know that they can hear the difference between different languages so uh, in this particular study we were testing if they could hear the difference between english and tagalog which is the language from the philippines um, and so this was in vancouver so we actually had a lot of babies born to mothers who spoke those languages during their pregnancy that's why we chose those two languages and we we're interested in comparing those babies to babies born to mothers who just spoke english so we're talking about even sort of prenatal bilingualism you know what's happening in the womb 
And so to test if the babies could tell the difference, uh, okay, well, what can a newborn baby do? Well, they, you know, they can't respond to a survey, they can't press a button, they can't talk to you. Uh, but I, you know, I like to tell the joke that newborn babies really suck because they can suck really well, right? <laughs> so, so what we we taught them, we gave them, we gave them a little pacifier that was attached to a, a computer that would actually measure their sucking. So uh, what would happen is every time they suck on that pacifier, the computer would play them a sound to hear. And newborn babies really like hearing sounds of the human voice. This is what we were playing for them. And so we actually taught them that they could control the sounds with their sucking. If they wanted to hear more of the sounds, they could suck more. If they didn't want to hear so many, they could suck less. less. And, and they, could, they could learn this, you know, even newborn babies. So this is a behavior they can control. And so uh, what we did to see if they could tell the two languages apart is that we... Um, we would play them one language over and over. So they would suck, they would hear English, suck, English, English, English. And at some point for half the babies, when it's, once they're bored, we switch them to the other language. So from English to Tagalog, from Tagalog to English. And we see well, what happens with their sucking. If they notice that it's a change, we expect their sucking to increase. And we play them more of the same thing, we accept, expect them to kind of be bored. And that's exactly what we found. So when a new language was played, they increased their sucking showing that, oh, I heard that something is new. Um, and so what we found in that study was that both the, the bilingual babies who'd been prenatally exposed to two languages and the monolingual babies who only heard that one language, they both could tell the difference between those two languages. But in another study where we kind of alternated, like played them English sometimes, Tagalog, and switched back and forth to see which one, would the, was there one that they would like more? Was there one that they would suck more to hear? We found that the English learning babies, they sucked more to hear English. So they're like, oh, this is my language. Yeah, I want to hear more of this. The bilingual babies really like both languages. So they seem to know, okay, both of these are my languages. I should pay attention to, to these. So this is just one of the ways um, that we understand what young babies do. And of course, sucking works well for newborn babies. We have other techniques for older babies, which rely on their looking pattern. So how do they look mm -hmm. and respond with their eyes to, to different things that we, we show them and play for them. I, I, was, I was wondering when we were talking about um, how babies separate the languages, you know, like, like if somebody gets, has, has an accident, they hurt the, what was it the Vernick, Vernicki area or the Braca uh, area, they can talk, but they speak nonsense and I think, uh, uh, does that, so is there like a, an area in the brain that controls the separation of the languages, do, do, do you know, like, for example, I have an accident and suddenly I, I mix all my five languages. Do yeah, that? so, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good question. So when we're talking about um, sort of language separation, there's sort of two different things that we could think about. So for a baby, before they're going to talk, we're really talking about how they're representing those languages in their mind. So kind of, we don't think that there's, you know, one spot for English and one spot for French. That's that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, you know, the mind has ways of telling things apart and, and sort of separating them. Even if they're physically located in the same area of the brain. So that's sort of one part of it. Another part of it is, OK, well, once you start speaking and especially adults, you do have to select that right language to use. So you have all the knowledge of all your languages. How do you make sure that, okay, I'm using words from one of my languages with the grammar from one of my languages, but maybe I don't want to use the other language. I'm just going to use one of them. And so that those are the frontal parts of the brain that actually control uh, your behavior. And it controls not only language behavior, but all sorts of behaviors. It controls you from not eating the whole piece of chocolate cake. Uh, you know, it controls you from, you know, biting your tongue to, to, to you know, when uh, your in-laws are around or, or what have you. So well, mine's not working too well. <laughs> no, mine neither. <laughs> there is that, that front piece of the brain, those frontal areas, prefrontal cortex that, that does um, control language and it's going to be important for language production. Um, but it's another thing to think about, okay, what, what's inside the brain and, you know, is it represent? Of course, you have to represent those two languages separately to be able to, to speak them separately. That's, that's kind of the first step if you like what you just saw and want to see the whole interview please click here or if you want to know what other great content rml has to offer here are the youtube recommendations and as always please click on that big button in the middle to subscribe see, see you, you soon, soon.